What's up, Ultra Universe? I'm your host, Ultra Jim 1973 here, and today, guys, uh, Smogon has just updated some uh, information on some leaks about Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Um, I don't know if these are real or not. It says they are 95% certain that they are real, but I'm still not sure about it. They sound kind of off to me, and I'll get into why it sounds off in a little bit. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, do a little bit of background on what or on how this information got to Smogon and all that. So it says roughly about two weeks after Sun and Moon's announcement, Orange Island's moderator, Kodra Roll or Kodra Roll, something like that, uh, Kodra Roll received a private message in regards to information about the upcoming games. At first, he dismissed it as a joke because of the really poor Japanese likely done using Google Translate, but something intrigued him. You can see the original message below. We're not going to look at the original message, but, uh... Alright, so it says, Kadra Roll, under guidance from Smogon's flying press, decided to meet with the user. Surprisingly enough, they didn't live in Japan. In order to guarantee the safety of said user, we had decided not to reveal their location, we had a look into the information and we have now, oh, and we can now reveal with 95% certainty that the leak is correct. It was decided that the user's account be better off deleted to minimize the risk of said user being found out before we were able to share this information. We had also, uh, we, uh, we also advised Kajra Roll to avoid the forums as long as possible to avoid any potential backlash. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, Kajra Roll had to return prematurely. Alright, so that's the background of how this information got to Smogon and all that. So, yeah, if you want to check out the Smogon page, I'll leave a link in the description. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this new information. So, first off, we have a scan, uh, or a, a sketch of a scanned Pokemon, a, a brand new Pokemon. It's set to be revealed in May's Koro Koro. Uh, and it says, from what we can determine, it is named Fluff in Japanese. Although, part of the text does appear to be cut off, so we're not sure of its full Japanese name. Uh, I'll, I should have a picture up right about now of this uh, sketch. But uh, from me, in, in my opinion, it looks like it's going to be like a bug. Maybe a bug grass type, like Sawaddle or something. Because it looks like it has antennas, and it looks like it has like leaves on the side of its head I'd have no idea but apparently its name's going to be fluff that's really all we know other than that uh, oh and it's gonna be in May is Koro Koro so that's really all we know so uh, I guess we can look forward to that if this is real or not they said it's 95% real but I don't I don't know um, but anyway let's move on to some more important stuff like mega evolutions so we have three New Megas uh, predicted in this, in these leaks, uh, and surprisingly, they're all three Pokemon that I really wanted to get Megas in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but we did not get them. So I guess they're making up for, uh, for that. So first off, we have what everybody wanted, Mega Flygon. Uh, no changes to the ability or the typing. It's still going to have Levitate, and it's still going to be Dragon Ground. But these are the predicted stats that it's going to have. It's going to have 80 HP, 120 attack, 100 defense, 100 special attack, 100 special defense, and 120 speed. So, yeah. Those are Mega Flygon stats, abilities, and typing. And I'm sorry, I just, the, I just hit the mic. So if you heard that, that was me bumping into the mic. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then we have one Mega that I really wanted in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, um, Mega Skarmory. Sadly, he will not be Dragon Steel, which is what I really wanted, but he'll still be still flying. Um, but he will get the ability Tough Claws, so that's cool. So now Mega Skarmory is going to do a lot more damage than he does, so... Yeah, and with the the predicted stats are going to be 65 HP, 125 attack, 125 uh, defense, 65 special attack, 60 special defense, and 125 speed. So, 
with uh, the boost in attack and the ability Tough Claws, this thing's going to be a fucking powerhouse. If only they would have went the extra mile and made him dragon type, that would have been fucking amazing. That could have given him uh, so much potential right there if they'd have made him dragon type. But um, anyway, and then the, the final mega that they've predicted or leaked is Mega Delcaddy. Now, if anybody has ever used a Delcaddy in a Pokemon game before, you'll know how shitty Delcaddy actually is. It is fucking terrible. Delcaddy needs a Mega, and I'm so glad that they're finally giving it one. Well, from what they say, they're giving it one. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's real or not. I really hope this is true. And the ability that it's getting is going to make it so much fucking better. Um, it doesn't say anything about its ability, uh, about its stats or uh, typing, but it does say the ability. Um, the ability is going to be something that we haven't already had in a Pokemon game before. It's going to be Rationalist. Now, what Rationalist does, it's basically a variant of Normalize, but instead of making your own moves normal type, it's going to make the opponent's moves normal type. So, basically, Mega Delcaddy is going to have no fucking weakness. Because, like, it's it, Rationalist makes all the opponent's moves normal type. So, if they're going to use, like, Mock Punch or something, nope. Not Stab. Not super effective. I don't know why I said Stab, but not super effective. Because it's normal type, so, you know, fuck your Machamps and all that. Mega Delcaddy doesn't give a fuck. It's going to eat up every fucking hit it takes. Because its ability rationalist so that's really good um and it says the limited information about mega del caddy hints that the ability will be very powerful i mean of course it's going to make it to where it has like no fucking weakness uh and it says in conjunction with a certain move and double battles possibly more than balancing out del caddy's subpar stats so i'm actually really excited about these new megas uh Especially Mega Delcaddy because it so needs a Mega. And it finally is getting one. And it's going to be amazing with its new ability, Rationalist. Alright, so anyway, we're going to move on to uh, the moves, abilities, and items that were revealed or leaked. So, first off, we have a new thing called Assault Shield. Sound familiar? It's basically a physical assault vest. It's all it gives us. So, Assault Shield is a new item. The physical version of an assault vest. All right, then we have a new ability called Boundless Rage, which is very broken from what I'm seeing right now. It says every move will result in a critical hit, and it says we imagine that this ability, much like Huge Power, will be used to buff weak Pokemon. So this right here. This freaking ability right here sounds so game-breaking to me, but I, I don't know what they're going to do with it, so I have no idea. Uh, every move will result in a critical hit. That sounds so broken to me. But I, I, I like I said, uh, like I just read, they imagine it's going to be for more weak Pokemon. Uh, really, the only Pokemon that I can see needing this would be Magikarp. Because he really doesn't get any... Like, he's terrible. Like, get this ability in a Magikarp... Don't have to worry about training it up. It'll be easier to train a Magikarp up with this thing. Um, or or it might be given to like the the Zygarde cores and cells since they really aren't going to be that good from what we've seen in the anime and stuff like that. So I don't know. We'll have to see. And then uh, the next ability is Thunder Feet. Essentially, Gale Wings for Electric types. It has been confirmed that Electivire, Electrode, and Mag uh, Minetric. We'll get this move. So Electivire, Electrode, and Manetric will get Thunder Feet, which is a the electric type version of Gale Wings. Oh boy. Like Gale Wings Talonflame wasn't enough. Now we're gonna have fucking Thunder Feet Manetrics. They're gonna Thunderbolt every damn thing on the field. And then we have some new moves. Uh, we have a rope attack and electrocution. Respectively scald for grass types and electric types. So, um, it doesn't say that they're going to have any secondary effects, but I, in my opinion, I feel like Electrocution is going to paralyze the opponent, and Rope Attack is probably going to be like Bind or Wrath, where it just does damage every turn until it wears off. 
basically like Skull, where Skull burns you. I feel like that's what the, these two moves are going to do. So we have Rope Attack and Electro... Uh, electro oh my god, I can't freaking read. Electrocution. All right. So the Scald versions of Grass and Electric types. All right, and then we have a new, another new move called Piercing Dust. 80 base damage special fairy move that hits steel types super effectively. Wow. This might be another great, uh, game breaking move right here. Oh gosh. A fairy move that hits steel types. I mean, that's, uh, I guess, coverage for steel types for, uh, fairies, for fairies right there. And it said that Gardevoir, Diancie, and Azumarill will all get this move. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, a new move for fairy types that is super effective against steel types. It's 80 base damage. So that's that's pretty cool. But it's it's special. But, I mean, hey, whatever. It's super effective against steel types. That's, that's pretty amazing. All right, and then we got another move called Shrapnel Shot. Can you guess which... Uh, type of Pokemon will get this move because I can steel types uh, It says uh, It's a special steel type move that hits every member of the opposing team. So basically like a uh, steel version of surf uh, You know surf discharge stuff like that Razor wind, you know And it's 25 base power and heatran and magnezone will both get it and it says, so expect a Scarf Magnezone to become a very popular lead. Alright, so expect a Scarf Magnezone to become a very popular lead with Shrapnel Shot. Alright, and then we have another ability called Skill Protection. And it says this ability cancels out Mold Breaker and clones of Mold Breakers such as Ter Turbo Blaze and Terra Volt. So that's a new ability, Skill Protection. Ooh, this new move after that though looks so f it sounds so powerful. Uh it's it's called Ghoul Wrath and it's a ghost type Draco Meteor. If you guys do not already know, Draco Meteor is my favorite Pokemon move. So I cannot wait to see what Ghoul Wrath is going to look like. Just imagine like a I just imagine like a Gengar using it and like a bunch of ghosts just come crashing down on the opponent's Pokemon just like Draco Meteor. Oh my gosh, it looks so fucking amazing. I can just picture it in my head right now. Alright, and then we have a another ability, Divine Justice. Alright, it says a better version of Synchronize that also affects other secondary effects such as critical hits and flinches by forcing the opposing Pokemon to suffer them the turn after the user is inflicted by them. And it says the four Musketeers all get this as their hidden ability. So Keldeo, Verizion, Terrakion, and Cabalion will get Divine Justice. So essentially it's a step up above Synchronize. To where you know how Synchronize, if you get burned or paralyzed, then the opponent Pokemon gets burned or paralyzed. Basically what Divine Justice is going to do, if you get flinched, your opponent gets flinched. If you get critted, your opponent gets critted. The, t the turn after you get critted or flinched. So that sounds really cool. Um, I, so yeah, Divine Justice. Can't wait to see what happens with that. And then we have a an item called Memory Stick. So we have another new item. Uh, the first move this Pokemon uses will be 1.4 times as powerful as the for the rest of the battle. So Memory Stick. So, like, I can't wait to see what this thing does, because, like, what if a Pokemon is, like, using, like, Power Up Punch the first turn in battle, and then you have a Memory Stick, so then the Power Up Punch is powering itself up every turn, and then the Memory Stick is also powering it up. So that's essentially something that you could do right there with the Memory Stick. So, yeah, there's the there's all the new moves, abilities, and items that we have, uh, that have been leaked. And now we get on to the information that is probably going to confirm that this, all this is fake. We have the in, some new information about the Zygarde cells and all that. Or essentially just about Zygarde and his forms and stuff. And I keep hitting the freaking mic. Why do I do that? Alright. It says, As we all know, there are four new Zygarde forms. We've received new information on these. Alright, it says Zygarde cell form. Predicted stats, 5 HP, 5 attack, 
five defense, five special attack, five special defense, and five speed. So I can only assume that this thing's going to get the ability Boundless Rage because it's going to suck ass. Because what I'm about to tell you, it, it only makes sense that this thing would get Boundless Rage. Uh, in the in the core, core is basically the same thing. Five of every stat, and the abilities are unknown for both of them. But I can only assume that they're going to get, you know, Boundless Rage because I'm about to read something that's going to explain why. Right, it says, "What do we know?" Um, the answer lies in Zygarde's signature moves, Thousand Arrows and Thousand Waves. Zygarde's Cell only comes with one move, Thousand Arrows, while Zygarde's Cell only learns Thousand Waves. These two Pokemon are key to teaching these moves to Zygarde, as well as unlocking Zygarde Complete. Both Zygarde's Cell and Zygarde Core will appear in the game in two separate ruins, only accessible after the Elite Four, and that'll make sense in a minute. Uh, they won't be standing in a Pacific in a specific spot like most legendaries instead there'll be very rare random encounters only found in the last room of the ruins so basically like Bagon and Ruby Sapphire and Emerald and will have a catch rate of three they will also be level one so make sure to pack a false swipe user so or <laughs> if you're like me hack in a bunch of master balls for these bitches because this is gonna be a pain in the ass to catch them um, so yeah, like I said, they're all level 1. But the thing is, I'll get into more detail about why they might have Boundless Rage in a minute. I kind of just want to read all this other information. Alright, and it says Zygarde 10%. It'll have 10 HP, 20 attack, 5 defense, 5 special attack, 5 special defense, and 75 special. Uh, not special, but speed. Sorry about that. And it'll have the ability to run away. Zygarde 10% can be found running around in the wild at level 10. Once you catch it, you can fuse it with Zygarde Cell or Zygarde Core, but only if both Zygarde 10% and whichever cellular Zygarde form is chosen are at level 50 or above. So you can you can choose to fuse it with Zygarde Cell or Zygarde Core. And the reason why I'm saying that Zygarde Cell and Zygarde Core will have Boundless Rage, which is the one that buffs up weak Pokemon, is because you have to train the damn thing to level 50 to fuse it with Zygarde 10%. And then that'll get you, and then this will get you Zygarde 50%, which, with whichever signature move, the cellular form you fuse to carry. So, like, if you fuse Zygarde 10% with Zygarde Core, it'll get 1,000 waves. The 50% form will get 1,000 waves. And if you fuse it with Zygarde Cell, it'll get 1,000 arrows. So that's why I think that Zygarde Cell and Zygarde Core will have Balanced Rage, because they have to, you have to train them to level 50 which is not going to be an easy task when their stats are worse than Magikarp's, essentially. But anyway, let's continue reading. And it says, If Zygarde 50% or Zygarde Complete are KO'd, it will revert to its 10% form and the Zygarde Cellular forms that were used prior back to level 1. That's... This is the information I'm talking about that makes this seem so off to me that this could potentially be fake. Why back to level 1? That's going to piss me off so much. I'm going to be sitting there training this damn thing up to level fucking 50. And it's going to get KO'd and fucking knocked back down to level 1. You know how many times it's going to, like, it's going to piss so many people off if that happens. So all I can say, guys, is switch train or rare candy that thing up. Because this is going to be a pain in the ass to get... But then it gets better. Then it gets it gets fucking better after this. Then once both Zygarde fifty percent and the remaining Zygarde cellular form are at level one hundred, they can be fused to create Zygarde complete, and the signature move Zygarde had will be replaced by the other. But once Zygarde complete is created, it will turn against you, and you will have to catch it. Need I remind you at level one hundred with only five Pokemon. Now, that may not sound bad if you have a Master Ball, but what if you don't have a Master Ball? This thing's level fucking 100. This is like Arceus. Why does it turn against you? I have no fucking idea. All I can say to you guys is pack a well-rounded team or pack a shit ton of Master Balls. So you, do, you know you won't run out and you won't have a problem catching this thing. Because its stats are as predicted. 150 HP. 170 attack. 190 defense, 110 special attack, 
130 special defense, and 150 speed. And its ability is Perfect Aura, which it'll render its immune to fairy and dark type moves. Talk about a perfect Pokemon. So, it's going to be immune to fairy, so basically no weakness to fairy type. And no weakness to dark, which I don't, it doesn't have a weakness to dark type, it's dragon ground, but... Basically, it's, uh, a, its ability counteracts or counters uh, Xerneas and Yveltal because they're dark and fairy. But uh, yeah, so that's basically what we know about Zygarde. So the reason I say that Zygarde Cell and Core are going to get Balanced Rage is because their their stats basically suck. And you have to train them to level 50 and then level 100 after that. So, and then uh, and I think Zygarde 10% is going to be the, the roaming Pokemon in this game because it has the ability to run away and you find it roaming around or randomly in the, in the region. So it's probably going to be the roaming Pokemon. I don't know if that's true or not. It just it seems like it to me with the ability and the description of it. But uh yeah. All I can say is it's going to be a pain in the ass to get Zygarde Core uh because you have to train up the level the level 1 fucking Core and Cell and then the level 10, I think. I don't know if it says it. All right, whatever. Level 10 uh, Zygarde 10% form. You gotta train those up to level 50. Fuse either the core of the cell with the 10% to get the 50% form with either Lands Wrath or Thousand Arrows. Not Lands the Thousand Waves and Thousand Arrows. Lands Wrath is Zygarde's signature move. I don't know why I said that. Uh, but So fuse the core or the cell together with 10% to get 50% uh, with Thousand Waves or Thousand Arrows, whichever one you fused it with. And then, if the damn thing faints, everything goes to shit because you, the cell or the core and the 10% form are going to be reverted back to level 1 or whatever. And then you got to start all over again. And then, once you get to the level 50, you got to train the damn 50% form to level 100 and the core or cell, whichever one you have left over, to level 100 as well. Which is going to be a pain in the ass. And then after that, once you do that, you fuse it together, and the damn thing turns on you, and you gotta fucking catch it again. And it's level 100. So, like I said, pack a Master Ball. And if that thing faints, there goes all that fucking time you spent training the damn thing up, because it's gonna be reverted back to level 1 again. This is gonna be a pain in the ass. This is why I said this information might not be real, because this sounds so fucking tedious to me. But then again, Game Freak throws shit at us left and right, so they could probably pull some shit like this on us. I wouldn't doubt it. But, uh, anyway, the only easy way that I can think of getting Zygarde complete form is to trade over the 50% form from X and Y that's already level 70, so you don't have to train it as much, and then just train the, the core or the, the cell, whichever one you have left over level 100 that way if it faints you don't have to worry about it being reverted back to level 1 because it isn't fused with anything yet so just train that thing and train the level 70 Zygarde from X and Y over to your game or if you're like me and already have a level 100 Zygarde on your game just trade that bitch over and you're done with the with half of the damn thing trade uh, not trade but train the the core or cell whichever one you have to level 100 and then boom there's complete pack a master ball boom you have complete form that easily but some people don't have a level 100 Zygarde like me but like I said train trade over the level 70 Zygarde that you get in X and Y and then train it up to 30 levels that it lacks and then you'll be good to go but the only thing you have to worry about is if it faints so all I can say is don't go up against any fairy or ice types or dragon types because it'll probably get one shot who knows because Zygarde's probably Zygarde fifty percent is not the best Pokemon as we've seen from X and Y. It's really not the best. So, but anyway, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, that's basically all the information that was leaked. Like I said, I don't know if it's true or not. This information could all be fake. It could all be an April Fool's prank. It was leaked last night on April second, so I it might be real. Um, it says that they're ninety five percent sure that it's real. But there's also that 5% chance that it's not real. 
I have no idea. I hope it's real because the it, well, I hope part of it's real, like the new abilities and stuff. I hope are real. The new items and moves and megas, I hope are real. But not the shit about the Zygarde forms. That sounds way too tedious for me. Um, I can only imagine just training these damn things up and then they fucking faint and you gotta do it all over again. They could at least cut us some slack and revert them back to that level 25 or like a decent level to where you don't have to train them up again. So, but if they have Boundless Rage, I can see that... I could see them having Boundless Rage because of the fact that you have to do all this tedious shit to get them. And like I just read, uh, their, the Cell form and the Core forms, they don't have the best stats. So I can see them getting Boundless Rage. So yeah. But even then, I really, from their stats, I don't see Boundless Rage doing much to help them. Yeah, it makes every attack a critical hit. I, it makes every attack a critical hit that you use, but I don't know. But anyway, that's the leaks, guys. This video is long enough. I'm going to have to cut it off right here. Um, so yeah, from all the information that we have, what do you guys think? Tell me what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video because you already know your support is always appreciated. It helps out with every little bit that you guys do. I love your feedback. I, I love your I love it when you like my video because like I said that helps me out a lot. You don't realize it, but it does. And also don't forget to subscribe because like I said, that helps out too. You know, any little bit of support you guys can give me, that's amazing. But uh I'll like I'll leave a link down in the description below about these leaks on the Smogon page. Uh, if you want to check them out yourself and look over them, maybe tell me anything that I might have missed. But anyway, guys, uh, this is the end of this video. So if you have enjoyed, like I said, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you with the next one. Bye.